I want to talk to you about a subject which we have spoken about before, and it has to do with how we view God. Now, we, could, we look at God on this level, and we think that God, you know, is on this level with us, and he's okay with what we do, you know, we're doing the best we can, he, he, he's, a, he's the old man upstairs, as, we referred, as he is referred to so often. But see, that's not where, that's not where God is. And that's not where we can, but we have to be. If we want to continue to exist as a nation, we have to know that God's there. God in heaven, he hasn't changed. The Bible says he does not change. So whatever he has said a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, well, scripture-wise, we only have that two thousand years ago. But, but ever how, ever, any word he's ever said, it remains in force. You know, he hasn't changed. God does not change. You know, we want to act and play church in so many, so many of, of what is called houses of God. They, I, I don't even want to use the term play. Well, they are playing, but they, they don't act like they know God at all. They have accepted any kind of sin. Now, I, I do uh, uh, talk about things that, which are relevant to our society. And there's no question that, you know, sexual sin is very relevant. Uh, it's, it's always been an issue. It's not like it just started. And it's been, it's been bigger issues at times throughout civilization. But we're, we're seeing things now. You know, uh, and I, I keep talking about homosexual marriage. You know, who would have thought our nation would have sunk so low that we would have, have uh, what the President of the United States would have done what he has done? Well, this happened in the past in other nations. So maybe we shouldn't be surprised. But any sin... Do you know adultery is frowned upon more than homosexuality? And you may say, well, now, adultery hurts somebody else, and, and homosexuals are hurting no one. All sin is against God. After David had Uriah killed, uh, and after, after God dealt with him, in the Psalms he wrote, that, Lord, against you and only against you have I sinned. See, that's where sin truly is. It's to God. Our sin truly is against God, whatever it is. So you can't justify yourself and say, well, I'm hurting no one. You are sinning against God. Now, if, if you're lost, then frankly, it probably really, really doesn't matter. You know, you, you, have, you have no forgiveness at any rate if you're lost. And I know you can't understand a word I'm saying. But if you are saved or if, you, if, you, if you're going to claim to be saved, well, know this. That God will never accept anyone who does not believe him. That is the simplest and fundamentalist truth or the most fundamental of truth, is that you have to believe God. God has accepted, uh, accepted us throughout the millennia because we have believed him. Not, not because we were perfect, never have been perfect, but because we believe what he said. We never called God a liar, and today God is being called a liar 24-7. We have to repent. If you say you, if you, say you know the Lord, then you will believe the Lord. It, it's just, it'll be inherently there. The Holy Spirit will guide you that way. If you continue to reject his word, believe what I'm telling you, you don't know the Lord. And I hate to tell you that. Well, I don't hate to tell you that. I, I need to tell you that. But you need to, you need to seek the Lord. You need to repent and pray to the Lord. The Lord will give you eyes to see and ears to hear and heart to understand. And if he does save you, that comes along with it. So we may, you need to remember that God has sent Jesus down the cross for our sins. And through him, we can be forgiven. But also, as part of that, we receive the Holy Spirit. And he'll, he'll guide us in all things the Bible said. And John, it says, you know, we need no man teach us, because the Holy Spirit will teach us. Well, you got to let him teach you. But read the Word. That's part of it. Know his Word. You have the Bible. Read it. 